This introductory slide was created by the Microsoft team, not me. If you look at it, ironically, the slide's graphics reflect many of the ideas presented in A Smart Way to Learn. From the big idea light bulb, a symbol of moving out of the dark into the light, all these words in plain sight. Success is no secret. Ideas such as brain, power, plan, work, team, creativity, and a search for time. Similarities continue with a sketch of the coffee cup. Slide two. Let's begin with the end in mind. Respect through accountability, trust through transparency, and our ultimate goal, be happy, healthy, wealthy, and wise. This is what we stand for. This is what we value. Peace on earth, peace in the classroom. Say no more. Slide three. The arrow points to where to find your game card templates. The graphic is a student doing the way. Her raised arms in triumph form a W. Her backpack symbolically contains all the stuff I'm going to give you. By the way, learn how to screen capture graphics. It's very handy when making game cards or planning digital lessons. The slide shows five steps for game card construction. Let's open a game card template. Open playway.ca and select the student or player's game card template. And we're on to the next step. Slide 5. Find the correct PowerPoint file and open it. Guidelines should be on by default. If not, turn them on and check the alignment of the game card template. Slide 6. Check the guidelines and note their position. The rectangles, which are your game card templates, can't move. Zoom in so the first card is featured, so you can see the guidelines and placeholder text boxes. Printing a test page of a blank template is a good idea to see if there are any alignment problems. Hold the paper up to the light and check the alignment. Slide 7. Note the difference between a student's cap note and a player's cap note. I've superimposed a cap note to show the relationship. Notice that a player's has a key but no text box for their name. Players may choose to integrate their name into the card design. Be creative here. Slide 8. Seven placeholder text boxes are aligned with the seven games of way. The font is Comic Sans 8 point. There are two lines. Learn the names of the seven games and the symbols associated with each. Slide 9. When you open a student or a player's template, you'll see two pages. Here's an example of the game's organic nature. Improvement ideas are never ending. I've decided just now to add a third page to templates so you don't have to. On the Q&A side, you'll insert a background image and create Q&As for the seven games. On the graphics side goes, you guessed it, the graphics. Slide 10. Moving right along, right click and duplicate a slide. Duplicating slides is good for draft work. Slide 11. Who remembers the frustration of losing your work before cloud technology? Kids, you have no idea of the growing pains with the hard and software from 
the birth of computing. This is not a tip. It's an edict. Save your work in a place you'll remember. Use a descriptive file name and date. Slide 12. Now, here comes the fun part. Designing game cards. At least for right-brainers. The left-brainers will do better with the Q&As. Link Q&As to the graphics you choose on your game cards. Slide 13. You want to see the format pane, which will appear on the right side of the window. You work with formatting a lot. If you don't see it, look on the top menu bar. Slide 14. This is where you want to insert a background graphic. You have to play with the transparency level, especially on the Q&A side. Make sure the text is visible. You can fill a solid color, gradient, pattern, picture, or no fill at all. Uh, by the way, that's the Apple yacht in the picture. It's supposedly shaped like a cell phone. Slide 15. You can drag and drop screen captures or insert pictures from your files. Select images that aren't too busy on either side. Slide 16. There will be a different way to set transparency levels for the foreground graphics you'll layer on top of your background. Slide 17. All graphics are different. Experience will show you what works the more game cards you make. You'll see your own style developing over time. Slide 18. Use the same procedure and insert backgrounds on the other two slides. Slide 19. We are now moving on to the graphic side of the game card. Change the background to what you like. I was going to say, don't use the same background on both sides, but it might work depending on the image. Don't be afraid to experiment, as long as the game cards don't change positions. Slide 20. Green feet? What could it be? A symbol of a journey? Pathfinder, maybe? I stepped in green paint? Sasquatch footprints? When you think of graphics, come up with relevant questions and activities for way. Always associate graphics with your Q&As. Slide 21. You can duplicate one card three times or make three separate cards. Typically, students produce the same card three times in order to share them. Players, make copies if you intend to share your cards. And you should. Slide 22. It's best to work on your graphics on a separate page. You can copy a game card template and insert it on the draft page to help you with layout and design. Slide 23. Working smarter and maybe a little harder at first in the innovation slash transition period is normal. Once routines and materials are in place, you're good to go. I like to select icons and shapes that you can fill with color and images. Slide 24. This is where student slash designers make their mark with original scanned art, screen captures, photos, icons, and word art. Consider transparency levels when adding graphics. You can fill shapes, use tessellation, layer images, the only limits is your imagination. Look to student game card samples on the video for ideas. Slide 25. Experiment with icons, shapes, pictures, and your own designs. Look to student game card samples for ideas. Slide 26. At the time, I didn't select these two auto shapes for a reason, but as I look at them now, what a perfect metaphor for teaching. Part sunshine, part storm. 
You can reduce the storm part through effective communication and partnership with admin, parents, and students. Slide 27. Now we look at inserting background graphics for game cards. Let's talk about backgrounds. They should relate to a main idea. Consider the percentage of area that will be covered by other graphics. Slide 28. To give more meaning and purpose to homework, once a week the class would share game cards. Students should make three copies, one for the teacher, one for a classmate, and one for you, the creator. Notice the different combinations of backgrounds. Slide 29. The page zoom in the bottom right of the window is a handy tool. Zoom in and out when necessary. I call this shot Deers in the Mist. It's one of my favorite pictures. Slide 30. Try and keep your placeholder text boxes to two lines. Slide 31. Dragging and dropping can be a little tricky if you're not careful. Make sure you don't select the game card itself, just the content. Once selected, drag and drop to the next two cards. Or you may also group text boxes and copy and paste that way. Slide 32. If you make a mistake, there's always the undo button. Too bad there isn't an undo button for life. And that's why we play to improve decision making. Slide 33. In the background are cardboards which are used to display completed homework. Each student has one at the front of the class. Cardboards fold into a pocket and hold student game cards. Not only that, students enter peer evaluated game card results on their cardboards. When peer evaluating, students use improvement check boxes which give advice for next time. We want to see growth from card to card. This is yet another form of student accountability. Did you do your homework? Now everyone can see. It's called consequences, not huge, but consequences nonetheless. Slide 34. What was I saying about the undo button? Everyone should have a home. Slide 35. Here we see the third group of text boxes being moved into position. Balance their position on the card before you deselect the boxes. Slide 36. Students lose marks when they forget their name. This wastes time. Slide 37. Check to see if the templates have moved. If so, fix it. 38. Here's a close-up of what over the line means. Select the rectangle and adjust to align with the grid lines. Slide 39. Do you have three Q&As for each game? Students, is your name and date on the card? Is your transparency too light, too dark? Is there paper in the printer? What kind of paper? Is printing both sides checked? And please note what pages you are printing on. Slide 40. The idea of entrepreneurial project-based learning is for down the road a bit. Conclusion. Well, there you have it. Your journey has either begun or continues on the same path you're on. Why is making game cards and playing the way game important? Here are 10 reasons why. 1. Game cards preserve your learning and your life, be you student, parent, or player. 2. Game cards are acts of service to others. 3. Game cards and playing the way game develop technical skills, confidence, and creativity. 4. Game cards are great workouts for your brain. Card creation requires higher order thinking skills. 
5. Game cards are works of art and science. 6. Game cards and the way game bring improvements to the way teachers teach and students learn. 7. Game cards help students learn how to study. 8. Game cards are made to remember and be remembered when you share your game cards. 9. Make the printing of game cards and cap notes a school-based fundraiser. 10. Making, sharing, and playing with game cards is fun. Have a look inside a classroom that works. A smart way to learn is free and available online 24-7 with video instructions, free files and templates. Register only if you want to network with others. What's the catch? No catch. My slash our business is to provide CapNote notebooks with graphics as a convenience to students, parents and players. Or as relationships evolve, a 10% licensing fee for schools who use way resources as fundraisers. My name is Brian McCarthy. I'm a retired teacher from Calgary, and this is what I know. May I share it with you, my friend.